Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com, on Roku, in the sports section, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. On iTunes, one word, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, there is a great fight that is a must watch for boxing strategists. Right? Not just fight fans, but also boxers themselves as well as their corners. It's the Cornelius Bundridge versus Carlos Molina fight. I have placed a copy of that match, or rather a link to that match, on my YouTube channel page in my favorites folder. You need to take a look at it. Let's set the table. Carlos Molina is the champ at 154 pounds. He's dominant inside. When he fights a front foot heavy opponent like a James Kirkland, and they get close to each other, Molina is able to neutralize and smother Kirkland's attack using his aggression against him and by using lateral movement he's then able to hit while holding with the other hand right outmaneuver his opponent and then set up intervals in the action where he's able to get off clean punches right he's very hard to deal with inside front foot heavy guys looking for knockouts, come inside on him. Try to throw big punches and find that they're throwing punches at air, right? Molina is just the kind of uh, positioner that takes the leverage out of punches. And Molina is a master at moving his hands inside. Simply put, he's one of boxing's better inside fighters. People need to realize too, when he fought Arislandy Lara, who these days is notoriously outside of the pocket, back then Lara actually was getting stoppages. And Lara came in the fight thinking he'd be able to get a stoppage on Molina. Right? He was not only unable to, but many people thought Molina won the fight. And keep in mind, Molina supposedly was rusty going into that fight after having a problem with his manager and after being out of the ring for a while. Right? But what's interesting to note in that Everslandy Lara fight is Lara is in the pocket a lot more against Molina than he is against Saul Alvarez. Right? Well, let's talk about what happened. Because Molina got out thought and out boxed by Cornelius Bundridge. Now understand, Brundridge is a bit of an enigma. On the one hand, he's 41 years old. People say, how could an old man win a title? On the other hand, when you look at his resume, you're going to find out that he's a well-preserved 41. After all, he's barely been fighting. Keep in mind, this is a guy who fought one time in 2009, one time in 2010, one time in 2011, one time in 2012, one time in 2013. This Molina fight is the first time in five years in which Bundridge has fought more than once in a calendar year. Right? Understand, too, although Bundridge has been KO'd twice, he hasn't been stopped in a fight since 2007. Right? So, chronologically, he's older. There isn't a lot of wear on the tires. What you'll also notice with Bundridge, before I get into the fight, is that he has outsized biceps. Right? He's very muscular. 
for 154. Also, he throws an excellent, and it's quick, right? It's so straight, it looks short, but it's actually a long punch. He throws an excellent straight right hand. It catches Molina by surprise early in the fight. Understand, there's some power behind the punch. That power sets up feints that keep Molina baffled. Now the reason this fight is noteworthy is that many people think that defense consists of moving your head and having your arms up to block punches. This is that rare fight where a fighter relies heavily on neither for defense but yet is pitching a defensive masterpiece. Right? Believe it or not, it's the 41 year old Bundridge, who's using positioning in the ring for defense. In other words, he knows from the Ishi Smith and from the Kirkland films that if you charge Carlos Molina, if you try to bum rush him, you're playing into his game, not yours. Right? Molina's going to pivot. He knows how to turn. He knows how to grab your hands. He knows how to hit you with his free hand. So Bundridge, the puncher in this fight, is actually the guy on his back foot. Right? What I want you to do is kill the volume on the fight. And just look at how much Bundridge moves in the early rounds of this fight. He knows Molina is great inside. So Bundridge stays outside. He knows Molina is a little bit taller than him and has to reach to hit him in the body. So Bundridge turns in such a way where Molina can't hit him in the body. What's messing up Carlos Molina is the distance between the two guys and Bundridge's movement, right? Bundridge, by the way, is so good at using positioning for defense, he's not even popping a convincing jab. He's just moving around the ring and he's fainting as if he's going to throw a straight right hand. That right hand hurts Molina in the first round before Molina gets dropped in the first round. So Molina is conscientious of Bundridge's straight right hand. So Molina can't rush inside. Right? This is a case of Carlos Molina, an excellent fighter when he's hunted. In against a bigger puncher who refuses to hunt him. Right? At the high end of the game, folks, understand the back foot is at least as effective against elite competition as your front foot. Right? Cornelius Bundridge doesn't back into corners. He's circling Carlos Molina. He's fainting. He puts up his left just enough to maintain distance between himself and Carlos Molina. What you find out is when Molina is on the outside and he's not being pursued, cannot cut off the ring. He cannot stop Bundridge from circling him. So the fight becomes an exercise in Bundridge being outside, right, using his height. He's 5'6", to his advantage, where he's threatening a straight right hand. He turns to the side. You'll notice whenever Molina tries to reach forward, and he has Molina reaching to try to hit his body, Bundridge just moves away. He's 41, but he's spending no time. He's spending no energy having his hands up. You don't see him go rabbit ears in this match. 
Rather, his hands are always down. Right? He's being offensive without stepping forward. Right? It's actually high-level stuff. Right? You don't even see him because he's the shorter man. You don't even see him moving much side to side. He's standing upright. He just uses this hand as a stick to keep Molina outside. Then he's throwing either a straight right hand or he's throwing a right hand to the body. It completely baffles Carlos Molina. Molina can't get into his A game because he doesn't have a James Kirkland up on him where he can get inside of Kirkland's punches. Rather, he has a guy outside who can deliver shots from distance and who insists on keeping distance. You'll notice there are times in the fight where, you know, uh, K-9, Cornelius Bundridge, gets Molina up on the ropes. And even then, he keeps his distance. Right? He's what I call a hoverer. He's not galloping around the ring. He's not Amir Khan against Marcus Maidana. Right? He's not Andre Durrell against Carl Frotch. He's not galloping around the ring. Or Andre Durrell against Curtis Stevens. Right? He's not galloping around the ring. But he's moving. Right? The first four rounds of this fight, it's almost nonstop movement from Cornelius Bundridge. He's just circling Carlos Molina. He's staying outside. And because he throws the straighter punches, and because he can throw the farther punches, notably that right hand, and because he has power, right? He drops Molina in the first round. He comes back, drops him in the tenth round. Those feints imply extra danger. Right, you're going to see that he's fainting throughout the fight, keeping Molina off balance. Right? It's great stuff. You know, I congratulate Brundage, Bundridge on a masterful fight. He wins the fight by several rounds. The crowd is literally taken out of the fight early because Molina gets decked early. Right? This is really a exemplar on how to use positioning as defense. Right? I'm not kidding when I say Cornelius doesn't do this. Cornelius is standing upright. He's not even moving this way. Right? I fault Molina on not raising the temperature in the room. You can't have a guy comfortably fighting outside, right? Standing upright, turned to the side, moving away from you when you throw to the body, using his legs for defense without breaking his rhythm, right? Maybe Molina should have bounced a little bit and jumped on him like, let's say, a Jack Dempsey or a Mike Tyson, right? But keep in mind, Molina has built a career on being pursued, right? That first Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. fight, which I think Molina clearly won. I believe I have a tape of that in my favorites folder as well. Right? Oddly enough, it's a paradox. Molina does better against bigger, not 5'6 like Bundridge, but bigger guys like six footed Chavez Jr., who are aggressive, who come in the ring looking to knock him out, than he does against shorter guys who are pawing with a left hand, staying outside, and occasionally popping him with a big straight right hand, right? You actually notice 
that Molina has a problem throwing straight punches when compared to what Cornelius Bundrich is doing. So take a look at the fight, take a look at the positioning, take a look at the movement. Cornelius Bundridge is a very savvy vet. I know in interviews, he comes across as happy-go-lucky. Right? You need to view his persona like you view the persona of poker players. Right? The guy's game is so advanced, he's not even covering up in this fight, folks. He's able to keep his hands low against a guy who was mauling James Kirkland inside, against a guy who, when he fought Izzy Smith, right, Ishi Smith, won, took Smith's title by winning two of the scorecards by several rounds, right? Molina looks like an amateur here, right? It's a bit surprising because Molina shook off a lot of rust to look great against Eroslandi Lara. Right? In a fight I privately thought Laro was going to win going into the fight. Right? Molina shook off the rust and looked great. Here, he looks baffled. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.